Good afternoon and welcome to the Canadian Gaming Summit's 215 Supplier Technology Session, Smart Cash Connectivity Solutions. My name is Mark Dallariva. I am the Director of Sales at Betrite Inc. For those of you who are not familiar with us, we've been a Canadian gaming supplier since 2009 and we are the exclusive Canadian representative and distributor for products such as gaming arts, slot machines and bingo products, Synergy Blue Skill Influence Games, Zoom Electronic Table Games, Gary Platt Seating, we do custom casino signage and digital signage. We provide gaming and slot parts and technical support services. We also represent slot peripherals such as Transact Technologies ticket printers and the reason we're here today, Crane Payment Innovations CPI, formerly known as MEI, and their bill acceptors and payment systems. I'm very pleased to introduce the Vice President of Gaming for CPI, Brian Wetterspoon, who is going to share how some of the smart cash connectivity solutions and enabling your data can help with the transition from cash to cashless, whether it be on your casino floor or a distributed market such as video lottery terminals. So without further ado, here is Brian Wetterspoon. Uh, thanks very much, Mark, uh, uh, for that introduction. And uh, we'll, we'll jump uh, jump right into the, uh, into the slides here. So for CPI, Crane Payment Innovations, that's, that's who we are. And most people are, are familiar with our, our two brands, the Bill Acceptor brand being MEI and a more recent acquisition of Cummins Allison in the count rooms. And we, we attack this problem of connectivity coming from experience and deployed products. So in our history, we have over 20,000 live connections out, out in the marketplace where we see over 4 billion transactions every week and 40 million cashless transactions in, in each and every month. So lots of experience, lots of products. Uh, to attack the problem of connectivity and bringing cashless to, to the gaming world. What we've seen over the last months and, and years here is, is two major trends that we want to talk about today. The first one is a reduction in active gaming positions. This is primarily due to, to, uh, to COVID. And as we look at the, the, how gaming operations are, uh, are opening or reopening in the case of, uh, of Canada, a couple of points to, to take away is that social distancing will mandate a reduction in the active gaming positions in the rated occupancy. Being uh, Living here in Las Vegas, we've seen it from zero all the way to 25%, 50%, up to now 100%, but that's taken over over a year to get there. And that's come at either turning games off on the floor, rearranging the floor, or removing games from the floor. But the, the outcome is reduced gaming positions on the floor. So operators are looking for technology and automation to, to help maximize the gross gaming revenues on these smaller floors, but also to support reduced staff that have, been, um, have, that have occurred throughout the, the pandemic. And as we reopen, uh, you know, re rehiring, uh, requires more efficiency, more information, more data for those those reduced uh, headcounts that we see in, in our operators' uh, um, places of business. And another key part of this uh, back, you know, this trend here is that solutions need to be backwards compatible. And it's more important than ever as, as budgets are, are constrained, cut, reduced, delayed, and that so best-in-class best solutions are ones that seamlessly are deployed to the floor, agnostic to you know, some of the systems or slots compatible with all the above, new and old, so that you can economically and seamlessly deploy new systems to bring connectivity. So operators are looking for cost-effective business intelligence solutions to monitor, inform, and automate data into actionable insights so they can maximize the revenues maximize the customer experience, and do it efficiently. The next trend that we see in gaming is the momentum towards cashless. One of the big takeaways we've learned over the last couple of years here is that casino operators are looking for that retail digital experience to come from, from our day-to-day -day world into the, gaming, into the gaming operations. So what does that look of uh, gaming operations look like? So cash cashless, and we, we say both because there'll be a, always a transition period similar to what occurred when, uh, when Tito came into uh, the gaming world. So for instance, Nevada, 
is, is changing regulations to, to create a uniform regulatory environment for the gaming industry and others will, will follow. So there is momentum from a regulatory aspect to consider and regulate different forms of cashless gaming. And we're already seeing that uh, here in the U.S., uh, that uh, that other other markets coming uh, or approving cashless um, on the on the on the gaming floor. The goal is to give customers a choice and convenience. Back to that digital experience in our in the retail world that we see in convenience stores and bill pays and grocery stores, bringing that into into the gaming world to to give those uh, those players a, a choice in the convenience that w that we know and are accustomed to in the retail world. You have to be mindful, though, of any money laundering, knowing your customer responsible gaming as, as you digitize the payments uh, here. Those are top of mind risks for regulators and operators. So solutions need to have those controls, those capabilities uh, in, in the solution. And cashless wagering is expected to be incre incremental, the cash wagering. Back to the title of uh, this section here, cash, cashless, both for a transitionary uh, period. So from, from our experience in the last couple of years here, interest in cashless and contact capabilities has never been higher. Customers are seeking cashless payment solutions that can span across multiple platforms, across multiple slots within the systems, the IT infrastructure of your operation, and quick, deploy it quickly and with attractive economics. The solution that we have in our in the marketplace is a product called Easy Tracks Connect, and it and it hits at these four areas here that I want to want to highlight for you. Um, the main the main solution here, the main value prop of Easy Tracks Connect is that it helps helps you to maximize your revenue by giving you a live floor view. It's giving machine machine health and status on acceptance rate on cash box, daily cash, in a easy easy to use, intuitive, mobile-friendly uh, interface, as you see on the screen here. Part of this is efficient cash collection. With the RFID techno technology inside our bill validator solution, you can bring efficiencies to the, to the f uh, cash collection off the floor into the count room so that you can maximize your, your, your efficiency in terms of time on the floor, off the floor, and in, in the count room. It gives you data insights into the cash collected. Collected. Being a live connection to the floor allows, allows the, the technical teams for a faster response, a faster and educated response. The live alerts out, are sent uh, proactively out to service teams, security teams, operations that are insightful in terms of they give data, what the specific problem is, where it's located, and how to fix it so that you can get the game Slot, slot game up and running as fast as possible so it's back in service and supporting that, that great customer experience. A whole host of alerts are, are part of the out-of-the-box uh, out solution. And a major piece of, of Easy Tracks Connect here is, our, is the, the forward-looking roadmap, of which um, you can see that we've got four or five points here denoted. The main one is digital payments. So in terms of monitoring the live floor, doing the health monitoring status, and making sure that the, the floor is optimized in terms of performance, we've already added a cashless payment option to, to our solution. We've already added the remote download capability. And in our roadmap, we have anti-money laundering, business analytics, and cash logistics management, which ties the, the, front, of the uh, front of the floor, front of the store, if you will, the slot machines, to the back office where the money is counted and gives you an entire ecosystem view of, of the money on, on your floor. So we're looking at, at our install base here to help elevate the potential of your payment devices with a connected platform. Bring a live floor view to optimize operations, alert of any issues, equip your team with uh, data, specific data on how to fix and where to fix and, and get that machine up and running. And then at adding on to this solution a cashless option and, and other capabilities as, as already spoke about. With that, we'll, uh, that's the, where we'll head to our, our Q&A session. Thanks. Thank you very much.
We're back together. Hi, Brian and Mark. Hey, Chuck. We're, we're all live. Thank you guys for taking time to join us at the summit this year. We really appreciate it. And also we appreciate your, your sponsor support. Uh, a couple of quick questions before we move to the next session. Brian, this one's for you. Um, is your Easy Tracks Connect solution ready for deployment or is it, uh, is it still in the uh, development at this point? Uh, yeah, thanks, Chuck. Uh, it's it's uh, in deployment. Uh, so we've been deploying the solution for the last uh, year year and a half now, and with the the acceleration of of cashless and the interest in cashless, like we spoke about and others in the in the conference, um, half of our install base now is is cashless enabled. So ready ready to go, and um, and then also roadmap in development. So. Um, we're, uh, yeah. we're finished, yeah, just finished up an install last week uh, here in the States. Good stuff. You guys have moved quickly on that front. Um, what are CPI's thoughts, Brian, on card-based solutions versus mobile-based solutions when it comes to cashless, please? I think in the long term, the mobile wins out just because just, you know, that digital experience we spoke about in the retail world, everyone has a cell phone and drive driving everything through the, through the mobile. So... Uh, I think in the long term, that's that's the vehicle to uh, enable and and enact the cashless solutions that come into the gaming world. Although there be a transition period, just like anything else, from card uh, to to mobile, but uh, mobile offers a lot of the uh, know your customer, responsible gaming uh, aspects that come along with that technology. Got it. Okay. Mark, let me ask you a question. We, we've had, uh, you know, we've had quite a few conversations over the past 14, 15 months during the pandemic. Uh, I know that BetRight, uh, you guys carry a lot of great products, including CPI, of course. Do you have any suggestions, Mark, to Canadian operators that are getting ready to reopen uh, with respect to some of the products you guys carry or some of the things you've seen over the past number of months, please? Uh, yeah, sure, sure. Well, I guess first and foremost, you know, I, I think everyone uh, in our industry in Canada is excited to finally get everyone reopened again, right? So uh, I think Casino New Brunswick is the only casino that has been opened. Um, you know, obviously Alberta reopening today, uh, Quebec next week, Saskatchewan the week after, BC July 1st. Looks like Ontario will be third around the third week of july hopefully uh, i'm not certain about nova scotia or, or uh, manitoba at this point but in any event just excited that um you know our customers are able to get reopened our you know our lottery partners our, our operating partners customers so that's great news very exciting for us uh, i know a lot of them have already done a lot of work during the shutdown obviously challenging <laughs> budgets but um you know whether it be you know integrating uh, multiple uh, divisions within organizations to have more of a, a, a streamlined customer focus, overall customer view. Uh, a lot of operators went through, you know, renovated their properties. Um, you know, I know we were involved in, in, in uh, you know, helping install, you know, purchase and, and install, uh, you know, a lot of Plexi for, uh, for our customers to make sure that the dividers are up to keep customers safe. We were involved in uh, actually, a lot of chair orders, Gary Platt chair orders for for refreshing the chairs. We we supported uh, GMS upgrades that were going on. Um, you know, obviously floor moves. I think uh, you know I, I would imagine that all the customers, uh, all the casinos across the country, obviously had to reconfigure their floors, especially based on restrictions and and uh, spacing that's required. So. Um, you know, we're fortunate that uh, we're able to keep most of our team intact and, and keep our keep our folks busy with these types of projects during a shutdown. It was just great to see Canadian our, our Canadian casinos uh, preparing for reopening. And, and it looks like we're there now. So it's very exciting. That's great. That's great. Thanks, Mark. Uh, Brian, one final question. Uh, all the experience that you've got at CPI and, and, and moving this product forward on the cashless side, is there a couple of really key points from your perspective that the operators in Canada should keep in mind as they're moving to that cashless environment, please? Yeah, I think the common themes, you know, throughout yesterday and today is, you know, that responsible gaming aspect, you know, that we don't we don't lose sight of that and knowing, knowing the customer and, and then finding a solution that creates the adoption. So you, you can spend all this time and energy and money on creating a solution, but the players uh, don't adopt it and use it and reuse it, then it's it's not a, a great solution. So um, the regulatory framework is a must have in that adoption, the ease of use, intuitiveness, uh, Apple friendly, if you will, 
um, is, is a key component to uh, deploying in the, the solution. Got it. Okay, Brian, Mark, thank you very much, guys. We appreciate you guys taking some time and joining us at the summit this year. And uh, we will jump to the next session, which we hope everybody enjoys. Thanks again, Brian, Mark. Thanks, John. Thank you. Appreciate it.